it's now time for Energy Insights, where you get an inside view and local perspectives of all the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley. This program is being brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association, and can be heard every Saturday at 9 a.m. on local radio WMOA AM 1490, and ESPN Radio WJAW FM 100.9 and AM 630. It's now time for the show. Here's Johnny Wharf, your local host. Energy Insights on a Saturday morning and a familiar face and I'll say a familiar voice for the listeners out there is Don Huck with Artex Oil Company and and maybe um, in the perspective of the state of the industry here we are in in you know 2019 back half of the year um, talk a little bit about any I don't know legislation or things that might be new to the industry as it relates specifically to you know this area okay well you know, I wear two hats when I work for Artex Oil Company, but I'm also president of the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. So that's kind of where the perspective I, I come from today. But yeah, from a legislative standpoint, in uh, 2018, the Ohio legislature passed House Bill 225. And in that, they expanded what they call the landowner grant program. And it's a method for landowners who have old wells on their property, not producing wells, not active wells with an operator, but an old, old abandoned well that they might have stumbled across on the backside of their property that nobody's known about for years. And they were trying to address that in that legislation. So what, I mean, basically what does it, does it say about them? I mean, what can we do with those wells if we find one? Well, in, in Washington County, there's been over 10,000 wells drilled in Washington County in the history of the oil and gas business. So, so there's, there's wells out there. Uh, but, yeah, they, what they were trying to accomplish was if you find one of those, that there's an avenue for that well to be plugged and done away with and that sort of thing. And they call it the Landowner Grant Program. You can I- identify the well. You can contact the Department of Natural Resources Division of Oil and Gas, and they can come investigate and start checking that out. And then there's a methodology for them to, to get that well plugged and uh, taken off their property. All right. Talk a little bit, transition back to um, Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. You're the president of, of that organization now and one that, that we're familiar with here at the radio station. We appreciate your support here on the station. Uh, but talk a little bit about uh, the association as it relates to who are the mem- you know, who are the members, who can be the members, why would you want to be a member and that kind of thing. Well, anyone can be a member, uh, whether it's a, somebody related to oil and gas or not related to oil and gas, if you, uh, if you wish to be a member. It's only $150 a year, so it's actually uh, very, uh, uh, very budget-friendly uh, for folks. But, uh, but, yeah, we're just an organization that's a, uh, that we represent a lot of the smaller operators in southeastern Ohio. They don't tend to have the large companies here. These are family-owned businesses, generational-type businesses um, that have been in the oil and gas business for generations and do a lot of things in this community. Uh, so, so Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association is a is a, a, a conglomeration of those people to try and represent the folks at our size that have the similar type issues. And the and that might be a chance to say, um, it, again, we come back to, and I think we talked to, to Bob Gerst about the good old boy network from back in the day, but the, it, it is essentially what that is. If there's somebody going to be in, inside that association that probably has the answer to most questions. Sure. And that, that is a chance for our organization. And, and we represent southeastern Ohio, but also kind of the river counties in West Virginia. So it, it does cross over the state line a little bit. But again, it's, it's similar type of operators been around for a long time. But you're right. You have the members can bounce things off of each other. Uh, it's a good chance to network and figure out if I have an issue, somebody else has probably seen that similar issue. And the association does a lot of that work to try and disseminate information out to our members to say this is this is something that's out there. Pay attention to this or this. You might find this helpful. So we try and do that on a daily basis. Yeah. And so that might be uh, House Bill 225 or, or whatever the latest legislation might be. But also, uh, opportunities throughout the course of the year, whether it's uh, trade shows, uh, get-togethers, golf tournaments, uh, um, shoots, or whatever like that. That's correct, and you know, and, and you hit on it. We have our our spring membership meeting. Try and hit on a few more legislative or update or technical type of issues. Our trade show in the fall, a lot of the companies bring in their well tenders, their field people, and we try to do training sessions and informational sessions for those guys to where they can. Uh, have a, a refresher on things that they do every day in the field. 
The key takeaway this morning from the president of the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association, uh, Don Hawk of Artex Oil, is anybody can be a member. So look into it if you're interested. We thank you for your time here on the show. And we thank Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association for bringing us energy insights right here on the radio every Saturday morning. Thank you for listening to Energy Insights brought to you by the Southeastern Ohio Oil and Gas Association. Tune in every Saturday at 9 a.m. on WMO and ESPN Radio WJAW as Johnny Wharf brings you your local and inside perspectives of the oil and gas progress going on in the Mid-Ohio Valley.